coming up there, let's talk about... Uh, just horrific. Another day, another week, and yet another report into yet another scandal of teenage girls being used and abused, groomed and gang-raped, call it what it is, uh, by people who, oh, whoops, happen to be Asian, happen to be Muslim, and therefore, no, they weren't investigated, they weren't prosecuted, it was allowed to happen for years and years and years. Well, the latest report is about Telford, uh, where for at least... 30 years, abusers in the Shropshire town, according to the report, thrived as their crimes went unchecked by the authorities. More than a thousand girls that they've been able to identify were sexually abused routinely by gangs of Asian men, while police dropped cases like, in the words of the uh, report, a hot potato, because they were scared of inflaming racial tensions. Uh, the investigation was commissioned in 2018, but they accused those whose job it was to protect children of repeatedly turning a blind eye and ignoring obvious signs of child exploitation uh, for sexual matters and basically uh, basically treating the girl victims as if they were child prostitutes. Well, let's talk about this with Samantha Smith. She's a Conservative commentator. She's written a lot about this. She's also one of the abuse survivors. Samantha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, incredibly brave of you to speak out. and I absolutely salute you for, for, for that and, and your courage in this. Um, it, it does feel like it's it's one a week now. We're getting these reports. It took a long time for anyone to look into this. I have to say, all credit to the journalists and the Times who initially, initially exposed this. But people like you, young women like you, girls as you were, 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 people were going to the authorities. The authorities were aware of what was happening for many years and did nothing. Why do you think they did nothing? I think that it's far easier to blame the victim than it is to go after the perpetrator, and especially in the case of, of girls in Telford, those these are we're talking about vulnerable young girls, many of whom are either under social services, have had a, a difficult home life, are known to are known to local authorities already. It's it's far far easier and more simple to just dismiss them as child prostitutes or white SLAGSs than to actually believe their their tales yeah. of abuse and to and to go after the perpetrators yeah, I mean, and that's the thing I think a lot of us find utterly incomprehensible. And, and the fact that it's happened, you know, Rochdale, Rotherham, I mean, everywhere. We, we, we discovered, you know, not only was it happening in pretty much every town or city around the country, I mean, it is still happening. There's no doubt at all it is still happening. This idea that for some reason, because the victims were young white girls, often, as you say, from the care system, um, that it didn't matter that a 14-year-old was turning up with a 45-year-old. I couldn't care less what, what religion or ethnicity that 45 or 50-year-old man was but that you know they were clearly not relatives um and the fact that they 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 weren't investigated a blind eye was turned because of this this concern by the police by social services by local councillors as well that you you mustn't you mustn't inflame social racial tensions in the town by by going after people who are committing crimes because of their their ethnicity or their religion I mean, it defies belief, and yet we hear it again and again and again. What, when you, when, when we'll talk about you know, what happened to you, when, when this was happening to you, what, what did you feel when you realised that nothing was going to happen? So I, I was, an, I'm a survivor of grooming and child sexual abuse. I wasn't groomed by by this particular type of grooming mm. gang, uh, as as was investigation Operation Chalice. But my case was handled by the CSE team. I was you know, under social services from the age of 15. And I remember one of the very early conversations I had with one of my social workers about some of the abuse I had suffered. And I was I was told if you were physically abused, why were there no bruises? That that pretty much sums up my experience of um of local authorities in Telford. And it isn't just it isn't just the police that that failed. It was councils, it was local authorities, it was yeah. all it was all responsible responsible adults that were there to protect young working yeah. class predominantly working class and, white and that's the thing and you said you know use the word you know let's, let's say let's can we say the word we're talking about grooming and gang raping slags they just thought you were slags and slots and you were 14 yeah you were with a 45 year old bloke or 40 year old bloke that was fine and normal and it, and it wasn't that but i do want to get back to i mean something much more important that the lives and the safety of the young girls in this country clearly don't really matter that much to an awful lot of our authorities as we saw with yet another report uh, from telford the shropshire town uh, saw for at least 30 years more than a thousand girls sexually abused by by gangs of Asian men. No action was taken by the police, the council or social services or anyone, even though they were fully aware of what was happening. They thought of it, according to the report, as a hot potato. They didn't want to inflame racial tensions. Well, Samantha Smith is a commentator and one of the Telford abuse survivors and is still with us. And I really appreciate you staying with us, Samantha. I wanted to hear a little bit more about what happens here. Now, 
you mentioned you know, police saying to you, but you haven't got bruises, so how could you have been abused? But this grooming that goes on, where the young girls who have often, is like you, know, you know, been in touch with social services, had very difficult upbringings in care. These these men, they 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 operate in a very clever way, don't they? Winning girls' trust, treating them in the, well, perhaps sometimes they're the first people who've ever been nice to them, giving them alcohol and cigarettes and takeaways, and then the sexual demands start, and then you're handed round, you know, all the men in a house on a Saturday night. It, it doesn't start, you know, like that. It's it's very it's very easy to judge from the outside, but for these young girls like yourself, it, it's 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 easy to get pulled into this. Oh, I can't, I can't hear, uh, Samantha. Have you got, are you on mute? There we go, we got you back, Samantha. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, <laughs> thank you. I, what I was saying is that this is what got, makes girls so vulnerable because like, you're very, very correct. Often it doesn't start with the abuse, it starts with the grooming. Grooming is the process by which someone is convinced to do something against their will. It isn't, it isn't necessarily that they were dragged off of the street kicking and screaming. It's that they were plied with gifts, alcohol, takeaways, money, kindness. Many, many girls think that these men are their boyfriends yeah. because they're, like you said, these are, these are sometimes the first positive experiences of men they've had in their lives. And then it's, and then the sexual demands and the, and the, and the rapes begin and once once you're in that situation it's very hard to escape because you feel a great sense of shame for allowing yourself quote unquote allowing yourself to to become a victim and to and to have been tricked by by such horrific men and the thing is police and social services and gps and schools they knew about this yeah. they knew that going on to young girls they would see girls coming in twice a week for the morning after pill they would see 14 year olds getting abortions they would see girls walking around with with like you said 45 year old asian men they would see all of the warning signs and yet they chose and then the report states in no uncertain terms that abuse could have been prevented if the police had quote unquote done their most basic job in investigated cases it, it is absolutely extraordinary and again these men they know they know who's you know the best victims they know who's not going to be believed not going to be uh, uh you know actually uh, who's going to be taken seriously by the police and, and it, it defies belief that this has happened in so many places it's not a few rotten apple police officers or rotten apple councillors. This is across the board. This has happened in every town and city in this country, and it's happened for years. What what needs to change, and, and has it changed enough yet? No, the, the same lines are parroted every single time uh, a CSE report is released. We saw it in Rotherham, Rochdale, Oldham. They say that these are mistakes of the past, that lessons have been learned, they're improving, that they've acted on recommendations already. But as, as recently as 2020, I believe it was 271 cases of potential child sexual exploitation were mentioned in that report that yeah. had been um, you know, referred to West Mercia Police. So this isn't a problem that's gone away. Young girls in Telford are still being raped, groomed, exploited and abused by adult men. And let's get it clear, these aren't child prostitutes. There is no such thing. <laughs> exactly. These are children. Children are being raped and abused, and the police, local services, and local councils are turning a blind eye. P Telford and Recon Council pushed for years to try and block an independent inquiry into CSE in Telford. Uh, the former Chief Superintendent Tom Harding of West Mercia Police said that he didn't believe there was a discernible problem with CSE in Telford. So, I, I bet if it was his daughter at 14 being raped uh, and applied with drugs, I think he might have felt differently. Mm. Yeah, it's, and, Samantha. I think that the change, I think that the changes that need to be seen are they need to come from the very top. We need first off complete acceptance of responsibility from council leaders, the the chief superintendent, the head of West Mercia Police. We need to see an, a, a joined up approach towards safeguarding because what we saw is is police and local councils discouraging teachers, GPs from yeah. reporting potential child sexual exploitation there needs to be a a robust mechanism and process in place for absolutely protecting. well you are an amazing advocate for this and i think you're incredibly brave and i'm, I'm sure uh, everyone listening has been really moved by by what you've had to say and um, i think if uh, if half of our authorities any of our authorities had the courage of a young woman like you then we would be in a much better place samantha smith thank you very much indeed for joining us uh